Have you ever heard of the Lex software? You are one. Has anybody heard of Green Dollar software? Lex, Time Banks, Time Dollars. Oh my God, you deserve to be poor. Barter! Anyway, time banks are where you bank an hour in Japan taking care of my mother in my hometown and I'll bank an hour in some other town taking care of yours. Time trading is the answer and that makes, that makes the time standard of money where people are worth as, worth as much as a piece of gold. Okay, who wants a short poem? I got, I got several good ones. Oh, I'll, I'll do this one. Short six-liner. I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay my tax for doctors, nurses who protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer. I'll pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. I ran because I got tired of being busted for gambling. I figured they must have something better to do to try to chase gamblers. And people asked me about inflation. And I said, well, how come the government's chips inflate and my poker chips don't? So I said, okay, analysis, interest rates causes inflation, economics lies. They tell us it causes, it doesn't fight inflation. So, I ran in another election, and another election, and another election, and 74 elections later, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records, asking all these politicians, let me in there to reprogram your bank's computers to operate on a pure service charge. I'll abolish the interest charge. And when all these poor paupers get credit, they won't be poor no more. And the job of the king of the paupers will be done. I'm in favor of a friendly... I want the banking credit system to be a public utility. I want social credit. So I'm a libertarian. Cops out of gambling, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I want interest-free credit, that's social credit. So I'm a social creditor, not a socialist. A socialist wants everything social except credit. Let the bankers rule and we'll socialize everything else. So, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, Knesset with the Records, most contestant. And now I'll do another poem for you. How many of you kids play poker? Forget the old slow people. Play poker? Come on, a couple of sharp kids come forward here. Come on. I can't afford it. <laughs> we want I'm, I'm the best I'm the best limit poker player in the world. Now, you can't say that about no limit because they got tournaments on. How do you judge the best limit player? Highest win rate in 20 years. Okay, here's my other poem. Oh, St. Thomas, I hear on street. Two others. This is called The Rich Man. Because I have a million bucks I sit upon my stern and leave my living tranquilly for other folks to earn. For in some co-creative way that isn't very clear, a million bucks will breed a hundred thousand every year. So as I have a health and economic strife, I mean to stand aloof from it the balance of my life. And yet, with sympathy, I see the grimy son of toil and heartily congratulate the tiller of the soil. I like the miner in the mine, the sailor on the sea, because of two hundred grand, the sailing mine for me. For me, their toil is taxed and to the annual extent. According to the banker's law, that gets me 10%. So get yourself a million bucks in any way you can and leave your future welfare to the noble working man. He'll buy you suits of Harris Tweed, an Airedale and a car. Your golf comes in your morning times, your whiskey and cigar. He'll cozily install you in a garden by a stream. With every modern garden, a comfort and a garden that's a dream. Or if you taste the urban, he'll provide you with a flat, secluded from the clamor of the proletariat. With pictures, music, easy chairs, a table of good cheer, to make you manage nicely for the hundred grand. And though around you, painful signs of industry for you, why should you work and have your money work for you? So I'll get down upon my knees and bless the working man who offers me a life of ease through all my mortal span. Who's going to lead to make me fat? Who slaves to keep me free? Who dies before his prime to get me 
around the century, right. whose wife and children well, toil and turn until their strength is spent. But I know I don't mess up on my 10%. And if at times they curse me, why should I feel any blame? For in my place, I know that they would do the very same. Though they talk of revolution on a Sunday afternoon, just offer them a million bucks and see them change their tune. So I'll enjoy my dividends and live my life with zest. And bless the mighty men who first invented interest. So, that's a great one in the writing. I learned it. This one I wrote. I did a poem on the site, I just had a friend of mine last week, Robertson. So I learned it first. Alright, now I wrote this one. God is good. I got no poker chips, I got no credit card, I got no cash. I got no poker chips, I got no credit card, I got no cash. But here it is. You got a coin, Terry? A lively coin. I know. So I can. With a coin. I got a coin, I got my cards. I did this on much music. Randy Bach in yeah. 93 when I ran for Prime Minister. I ran for Prime Minister. You never heard of that, right? All right, I got it. I got it. I need a kid out here, a sharp kid who played poker. No sharp kids who played poker. Anybody here play poker? Poker. poker. Come on over there. All right. You sure you want this poem? I don't think you're going to get it. You want this poem? All right, here we go. When you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash? Filling up your wallet with some money in a flash? Creating money accurately means to have the plates. The stamping of some paper and to notes best demonstrates. Or stamping metal in the coins. Or blips computerized into your bank account deposits. Checks now authorized. So whether paper, metal, volts of electricity, to have the plates is printing money absolutely free. Now if you printed it to spend, whoa, to spend, the others would be whale. They'd call it counterfeiting and they'd send you off to jail. But what if government would let you print it up to lend with only what you can collect in interest to spend? If you can print and lend a thousand out at ten percent, you make a hundred interest on printing that you lent. But if you could print up and lend a million out, you'd get an extra hundred thousand dollars for the foreign debt. If government stops using its own plates, it comes to you a billion dollars in debt With everybody being taxed to pay you interest of all the scams in history, to have the plates is best. They're never spending, only lending. Riches do await to all who with the plates become loan sharks to the state. And though to join the few, who thus they profit from my dream, wake up to see all the victims of this greedy scheme. The governments of old had treasury when on plates. Without the interest of the government of rates, most governments today to make to service debt in 99 counties in the last we're taxed almost a thousand dollars So we abolitionists want to plates back from the banks and have treasury created for a printed charge of things. The interest we save is now a month. I want to be diverted so that everybody gets a dividend. So we agree each one of these plates by private banks should end. That's the pitch. Yes, sir. So, anti poverty software and the anti poverty engineer. I think they're going to. Can you walk over to the other street and bring me my accordion? I'm going to play Amazing Grace. Okay. All right. I've also got a little carrier too if you want, all right? Okay, cheers, sir. Yeah, just...
What is your personal website? JohnTermel.com. Good. Okay. Have you ever been to a G20 before? Jeez. 19? Oh, yeah, when it was called G7. <laughs> I was in uh, Denver, Birmingham, Cologne, Paris. Okay. They were there, I was there. Yeah, I guess. Quebec City. But none that cost a billion dollars. Do you think that's excessive spending for security? Well, when they could have had a video call. They could have had a video conference call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it gives us a chance to vent our spleen. Yeah. And that way they'll be able to say that not only did they have no solutions, but we had none either. And we had our chance. Do you find the Harper government a bit of a, a copycat or a follower of the U.S.? We secretly declared it an unlawful march. Ah, uh, no opinion of Harper, you know. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's, not, he's not a herbalist, he's an alcoholic. You know, so yeah. he offends me in that way. He goes after the weak. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, as if right now, you know, crime is the big issue. It's not. Right, Stopping right. kids from going broke and being evicted during the crime, that's a big issue. Exactly. Chips call each other So, I represent our collateral with their chips for a fee, and we can represent our collateral with our chips for free. So, anyway, I'm known as the Great Canadian Gambler, because in my last year of engineering, I took the mathematics of gambling, of course, at Carleton University, and I became so good, I became a professional gambler instead of a professional engineer. So, you can find my book, Play Hold'em Poker Like a Bookie, because I'm the best limit hold'em poker player in the world. You can't say that about Nolan. Who plays poker here? Anybody? Jesus, my God, nobody plays poker. Anyway, this is not the pride of a poker player to be good with the chips. They managed to get 10 guys to put up their watches collateral, borrow 10 chips, and everybody try to put back 11. Mortgage comes from the French words mort, meaning death, and gage, meaning gamble. So when everybody borrows 10, and everybody promises to bring back 11, it creates a death gamble where somebody always gets knocked out of the game and they seize the loser's watch, resulting in the same chips chasing less watches. I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation. Economics teaches inflation as an increase in the money chasing the watches. I'm the discoverer of foreclosed watches being chased by the same money. One shift is taught in economics, shift A, more money. But shift B is not taught, and I'm the discoverer. So, my claim of fame. So, basically, if I get all you guys interest-free credit cards at the Bank of Canada, there won't be any more poor people anymore, and the job of the king of the paupers will be done. And we're only a couple of years away from it now. You know, in Africa, you can buy stuff by transferring your cell phone minutes. Oh, they got no banks, loan sharking them, bleeding them dry in Africa no more. Oh, they're using minutes. In Arabia, they're using cell phone cards. So, here we still got lots of stuff they can rip us off for, so we can't transfer minutes from my phone to yours. Yeah, go. But the moment we're poor enough and we're broke enough, they'll let us transfer cell phone minutes like they do in Africa.